Welcome, it's Mary Ellen McGonigal here with your Weekly Edge show for Saturday, February 14th. Let's take a look at what we're covering today. First up, I'll share with you some of the more impactful news that drove very volatile price action last week. And then from there, we'll take a look at the current markets. Where did we close? And we will want to drill even further behind that and take a look at some of the movement in the 11 S&P sectors as well as sub-industry groups to give a real good sense of really what's taking place beneath the surface of the markets. Last up, viewer question of the week. And this week, it's all about should you be using defensive areas of the market to help buffer the current downside price action that's taking place. So let's get started with some of these data and news items this week. First up, the geopolitical tensions taking place between Ukraine and Russia certainly was a primary driver of price action throughout the week. We'll get into that as we move on. And then also data-wise, we did see wholesale prices in January. They posted their largest gain in a year. That's all about inflation remaining at an elevated level, which is really concerning to investors. Midweek, we did see the meeting notes for the Federal Reserve from January. And investors were encouraged because the wording implied that the Fed might not be quite as aggressive in their stance to remove or certainly lower inflation. So that was certainly calming midweek for about a minute until we did see other news uh, and particular items take place. Retail sales for January, as well as industrial production, they came in stronger than expected for January. This is good news. It's showing an economy that's growing. However, the markets are not focused on that at this time. There are geopolitical and inflation concerns that are more at the forefront. Next week, we are going to get data regarding to the manufacturing PMI, as well as the core consumer price index. Both of these are very much going to provide more intel on the current level of inflation. This is something the Fed is paying close attention to as well. So it should and very well may bring continued volatility into next week. Consumer sentiment will be reported next week, and that's been dipping in the face of this high inflation. It's an important data point because consumer spending is part of the gross domestic product in fact, two-thirds of GDP is driven by consumer spending. So from here, let's go ahead and take a look at the broader markets. We want to see where did they close for the week. So here we are with the daily price chart of the S&P 500. And the S&P was down a little more than 1.5% last week. And we can see on this chart that the index has broken back below this blue 200-day simple moving average. Very significant. This is not a common occurrence for the S&P. And when it does take place, oftentimes it can be a forewarning of further downside. We can take a look at the momentum indicators. The RSI, relative strength indicator, is in negative territory, below 50, trending downward. Also, faster moving stochastics are also below 50 in negative territory and trending lower. So overall, we have a negative stance on the broader markets. We can take a quick look here at a weekly chart to get a longer term outlook for the S&P 500. And we can see that on this weekly chart, the S&P has broken below this 40-week or 200-day simple moving average. More importantly, your outside momentum indicators, RSI and stochastics, are now both in negative territory, which implies that the intermediate-term outlook for the broader markets is negative as well. A quick look here at the NASDAQ tech-heavy NASDAQ composite down for the week as well. And we can see that the prior week, the NASDAQ had been attempting to reverse this very swift downtrend here. It was beginning to break up above this 10 and 21 day simple moving average, kind of encouraging. This week, it gave that all up and then some. We are now back below any possible areas of upside support. 
and we can see the RSI and stochastics in negative territory. So things are negative for this tech-heavy NASDAQ as well. Technology stocks do not fare well in a period of rising interest rates. As inflation reads get higher, it's anticipated that the Fed will raise rates. So there are certain pockets in tech that do OK. Uh, subscribers to my MAM Edge report will know about that. But for now, the broader markets do not look constructive. Let's take a look at those sectors. I mentioned the 11 S&P 500 sectors. We're looking at a daily two-month price chart. What I've done is gone ahead and added this relative strength indicator and sorted it descending so that we can see which areas in the market are showing relative outperformance during this difficult period. Energy up here at the forefront, despite being one of the weakest areas this week, down 3.4%. So this pullback really is not entirely out of line, given the immense move this group has had year to date. So we can see that it's finding support, XLE, the energy ETF, at this upward trending 21-day simple moving average. Your RSI is still in positive territory. Now we had this MACD negative crossover, but we're still in positive territory, very similar to this early November period. But we are going to be on the lookout for signals of further deterioration. But at this point in time, it appears to be a mere period of consolidation. Next up here is consumer staples. And this can take us right to that viewer question as far as defensive areas. And the staples are looking constructive, certainly compared to the broader markets. This is XLP. And we can see that it is breaking back above each of these potential areas of resistance, these moving averages. The RSI is trending upward above 50. And then this MACD, we can see this black line just now poised to trade up above the red, which in turn would indicate a reversal of this downtrend. We have a nice higher low on the price action. So constructive price action taking place in this sector, which is certainly encouraging. I'll share with you a couple of names from this area that actually look uh, quite good at this time. So from here, we also want to pay attention to areas that are deteriorating or underperforming. Make sure you're not overweighted or, or not looking at in these areas. So first up, we can see healthcare. XLV is the ticker symbol. And it really has broken back below this 200-day simple moving average. And I'm pointing this out because this is another area that oftentimes when the markets are in trouble, it does fare well. It is viewed as defensive, but not so at this point in time. I'll share with you why. But we can see the RSI negative trending downward and likewise with the MACD. D. So certainly not an area that you want to be involved in. So from here, what I did want to go ahead and do is share with you some even more defined view of the markets. I have select ETFs here, very helpful as far as helping formulate an opinion and see which areas are doing better, certainly, than the markets. And first up, we can see gold stocks up here at the forefront, a big move up. Now, gold, of course, is viewed as a safe haven area of the markets. But also, we did see several well-known gold stocks report strong earnings. So a couple of drivers here. The group is certainly extended. But I would use this April into June period as precedence for this uptrend to potentially continue. From here, Brent crude oil up here at the forefront. It's closed the week at $94, very elevated level here. And it certainly is helping the outlook for oil stocks as they can take advantage of that higher oil price. A lot of that related to the geopolitical tensions taking place. Russia is a big provider of oil. Should we see conflict take place, they may, uh, Russia may put sanctions on their output for certain countries, which in turn should unfortunately push the price of oil up further. Volatility index, we can take a look. It is up here at that 28 level, much higher than average. The average for the VIX over many years is 12. From my work, any VIX above 18 is not constructive. It's indicating that there is fear in the markets. 
and that is certainly the case as we have quite a bit in the way of uncertainty most markedly the conflict taking place in Russia and Ukraine. So from here we do want to take a look at some of these other areas that are down here at these lower performing quartile. This is IHI medical devices ETF generally a high growth area within healthcare down over 4%. So this is one of the reasons that healthcare is not faring well. High growth stocks are not being favored at this point in time. Another area high growth that is down and out software stocks. IGV is the ETF here down another 5%. So very, very weak, an area that is being heavily shorted and one that we anticipate unfortunately has further downside ahead. So let's take a look at some of those consumer staple. I'm going to share with you three stocks that are holding up well, certainly compared to the broader markets, and there are good reasons for that. First up is Hershey Foods, H-S-Y. The company reported earnings this past week, and they reported very strong growth. They're seeing high demand for their chocolates, and we can see the stock really didn't respond super positively. The other two charts look even more constructive. But I would want to see this price break above this green 10-day simple moving average, which would help put this MACD into an uptrend and point to further upside. The uh, company also provides a nice 2.8% yield, actually 1.8% yield, which is certainly constructive in this market as higher yield stocks fare well during periods of rising interest rates. Next up, let's take a look at another consumer staple stock that reported this week, and that is Coca-Cola. K-O is the ticker symbol, and certainly a more markedly positive response to that earnings report. The stock broke out of this one-week base on relatively big volume. Take a look, this MACD black line poised across up above the red, very bullish there. And we can see the RSI above 50, and trending higher. Coca-Cola offers a 2.8% a yield, and the company is trading at a relatively reasonable multiple, but it certainly is in a nice confirmed uptrend. The company has been able to pass increased costs that they've incurred on to the consumer successfully, hence that is why the company is seeing strong growth due to their brand loyalty. Uh, last up, SJM. This is a stock that was on the MEM Edge report, the Schmucker Company, famous for their jelly. They also have uh, f dog food products. And we did have the stock on our list during this generally uptrending period. We removed it as it began to deteriorate. It's on our watch list now. It's firming up really quite nicely. The stock has broken back above these areas of potential resistance. It's now above each of its shorter term moving averages. RSI into positive territory, and we're poised to get this nice MACD crossover black line up through the red, which should point to a continuation rally. Uh, this company is due to report their earnings early next month, which could drive the stock higher. That's it for this week. Everyone have a wonderful long weekend, and I will see you here next Saturday. Hey, Mary Ellen here with Simpler Trading. Thanks for watching the video. If you liked what you saw, go ahead and hit that like button and leave comments below. And if you'd like to be notified to future videos, you can hit that bell icon and subscribe. Don't leave without subscribing to my MEM Edge bi-weekly report. I do have a special trial offer. And for those who'd like to learn about trading live with us, you can go ahead to simplertrading.com to learn more.